I decided to make a quick tutorial on uh, this thing about uh, making transparent shadows um, from a white background JPEG or PNG. So um, an essential thing we need to do is to uh, to mask the background out or mask the objects out. And in Photoshop, it's pretty easy. Just <coughs> take this selection tool and just select the background. Often you will have a background that is much more uh, defined and uh, a lot of more details going on. But this uh, image is pretty simple, uh, so it doesn't need a lot of manual work. But um, let's just uh, go in and uh, fix the small things here. I'm just gonna by holding down Alt, I'm gonna switch to the negative and subtract these details. I Make sure that I click this auto enhance. It will make sure that it detects uh, edges much more, much better. And uh, the oranges is actually um, the, it caught the edge really, really good. Uh, I had another file yesterday where it was uh, crumbled uh, bread and chocolate, and it really, really caused a lot of trouble. But uh, after a few minutes of work. Um, I actually got it to, to mask uh, really well. So what you could do if you were working with something that is uh, like a unicolor or something that has a consist consistent uh, single color, you could uh, mask out by a color range that also works really well. You find that under the selection and color range and then ju you just <coughs> You just go in and then you pick uh, all the colors that you want to mask and all the colors uh, that you don't want to mask. And then uh, the, the program will figure the rest out. Uh, but here we have a lot of different colors. Uh, we have a few different colors, so we're just going to go with the classic uh, masking tool. So now we have the mask down and uh, we don't want the shadows uh, to be in the mask. Uh, that's going to come in, a lot in, in, in another layer. So. Um, so let's just uh, put on uh, a mask and invert it by say command E I and uh, let's just disable disable the mask for now because uh, we need in the channels we need the uh, full picture to be visible in the channels and then just go up to R RVG and uh, press uh, while holding down command uh, press down on the picture here and then it will make, make a selection on, on all the tones in the picture. So we need that on a new layer. Um, normally you could just say, okay, I want to fill the selection with black, but then you couldn't go in and edit the, the black levels uh, with levels. So I usually make a mask on this one. So you can see now that we have a black and white mask uh, going on um, and I can fill um, I can fill the whole uh, page with uh, with black, and uh, I can see that I need to invert the mask again by command I. So now we have the shadows on top of the picture. I could just move it down, but I just want to show you that if we press command L or go into levels, we can just adjust the shadows so they become really really hard. Um, we can move them. We can make them more clear, uh, as you can see. Right now, we don't really need to focus on what's going on on top of the product, but uh, what, how the shadows work on, uh, underneath the product is, is, is a, what, what it is what we're striving for. So, so this is just showing that um, that you can f fumble with the with the range. I usually just take the top off because. A normal picture like this taken in a studio just has shadows everywhere and uh, if you want to cut some of it out you also want to 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 add some contrast to the shadow just to yeah just to make some of the spill shadows uh, go away I think this is good and um, and then we will move it underneath the product here and enable the mask so now we can see that uh, there is uh, transparent shadows uh, underneath and that's the black layer just masked out that is representing the shadows. And right now it doesn't really feel, uh, you can really see much of the shadow. What I usually do to both check the masking and the shadow is to add a yellow uh, or red layer or something that has a really, really sharp color. 
uh, because then you can see how how hard the shadow will be on color, and then you can see if your masking is leaving out uh, any uh, white spill on the edges. So that's that's basically about it. What you could do if if you had like a really advanced picture with a lot of details, um, you could go into uh, let's say we we are going back to just delete the mask. We're going back to the picture as we had in the first layer, just with the masking. Uh, I usually, um, while I have this tool selected or one of the other selection tools, I go into this select and mask. And uh, I, I just normally add a bit of radius for the edge detection. Uh, normally if you have hair or fur or grass or something like that, the edge detection works really, really well on that. And I also just increase the contrast a bit because uh, edge detection and, and really soft uh, um, soft edges often needs a bit, a bit of a contrast to work really well. And also this brush over here uh, with, the, with the hair or the grass uh, is really good uh, for, um, for capturing uh, details. So if I have an area where I'm not really satisfied with the... Um, the way it's uh, yeah. well this this is basically really good but I could just if this was like if I had hair on this I would just go through the edge here with this tool and um, and then it would just calculate a, a really really uh, advanced uh, detailed edge on that but uh, we don't really have uh, we only have sharp sharp edges on this so uh, so it's not it's not necessary but if I had like crumple or small bits of details I would go through uh, with this uh, in in the details uh, usually if I have a sharp corner and um, and the selection doesn't go into the sharp corner I can use this to just finish that uh, mask uh, just by painting into the sharp corner um, and you can just go over the edges also it will just calculate the whole thing um, but let's just uh, let's just say it's it's that and that what we need. So, what I normally or some what I do sometimes is that if I don't think this shadow is is bold enough, I could just uh, duplicate the layers either by dragging it down to a new document or just to Command J, and then I can just uh, fingle with the opacity here, so so it becomes much more clear. But in all reality. Uh, this is actually what uh, what the the photo was how the photo was taken, plus minus the contrast we 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 did uh, before. So this is actually looking really good. Uh, I can change this to white uh, just to make sure that it represents uh, what we will see when we use a white background. So yeah, this this is really good. Uh, this is the with, with the double shadow. Um, so that's you can easily see that's too much. So let's go with this. Uh, so I remove the white background or any background you've been testing with and just go and, uh, and export as PNG. And then you have like your transparent shadow. Uh, 